In today's video, I'll show you how you can go from this to this in just 15 lines of code and five minutes. Now, what I was really trying to go for was more of the Obama hope picture vibe, but this works as well. Let me explain. Pictures are just basically thousands of little dots. These little dots, they're called pixels. Each picture has thousands of pixels and that creates the dimension of the image. Now these pixels are just little dots of color and those colors are represented with what's called an RGB value, a red, green, blue value, which is actually just three numbers that represents how much red, how much blue, and how much green, and that creates the color of the pixel. So basically, pictures are just thousands of pixels stacked on top of each other, and pixels are just three digit values. So really, a picture is just thousands and thousands of numbers, actually. And because they're just numbers, we can actually use math to do cool things, like put on this filter and create this type of a cool image. So let's start. First things first, we need a selfie. Three, two, one. Great. So to do this project, I'm going to be using Python and specifically I'll be using DeepNo as my IDE. I'll have a link in the description down below that'll take you to a place where you can sign up to get this code and the data for absolutely free. So first off, I just wanted to upload the me picture. So here's the me picture right here. I uploaded that inside of the DeepNo and started a blank notebook. This notebook, I'm going to install Image.io. That is a Python library that lets you deal with images. I import it as IIO. The first thing I need to do is read in the image. You just do that using the IM read function and that sets it to IMG. And IMG, as you can see here, is just a big old list of three digit numbers. Those are the RGB values. So for instance, this first value right here, we can actually probably just put this into Google and figure out what the RGB value is and see what color it is. Okay, it's gray, so this is a gray color. That's the RGB value for that particular field. So you can see all the different pixels and what their colors are inside of this image. So the image is just a matrix of numbers. You can see the shape here. It's actually a three dimensional shape where it has 825 rows and 615 columns. That means it's 825 pixels tall and 615 wide, and each one of those pixels has three values associated with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is flatten this and reshape it. I do that using uh, NumPy and just built-in Python. If I image, if I flatten it and then reshape it, I'm reshaping it into a this dimensional by three. So basically, there's I'm just taking all the pixels and instead of having it be an, an image shape, I'm going to put it all into just one straight line. And I just do that because it's easier to do math. So each line represents one of the pixels that's found in the page. It's going to be, um, I guess it's going to be, let's think, it's going to be the first line stacked on top of each other, stacked on top of the second line, stacked on top of the third line. And uh, these values right here, each one of these is a pixel, each row is a pixel, and the column is going to be RGB. And what I can use is I can actually use an algorithm called k-means clustering. And what k-means clustering is it says, if you had to go through every single row of this matrix, so if you had to go through every single pixel, and say what family or what cluster it belonged to and assign it a value or a family or a cluster, what clusters would these belong to? So I set the number of clusters equal to four because I went through the Obama picture and there was four different colors. To find the actual colors, I used this cool uh, Chrome extension called Color Picker where I can basically click on it and then click on any sort of value and I get the uh, RGB as well as the hex value for those values. So you can see that there's one, two, three, and then four. So I used the clustering and I got, you know, four different clusters. Go ahead and fit that for my flattened data. And what that did is it gave a label of a zero, a one, a two, or a three for all of my values. And those values are gonna be represented by either the red, the dark blue, the light blue, or the tan color. So I created a quick little NumPy for loop here where I'm going to go through every single one of the labels for whatever value, zero, one, two, or three, uh, the color is, right, or the cluster is, I'm going to assign one of these colors. So I do that in this line right now. And then I just reshape it. I basically unflatten it from the long skinny column with, I guess, yeah, the long skinny column basically to that original interesting picture shape, uh, the 600, or what was it? 825 by 615 by three. And I do that with the original image shape. And then all I need to do is in matplotlib is pass in that value. This is once again, just, just a matrix. It's just a bunch of numbers. I pass that into the IM show and save the image and show it. 
And there we go. That is how we get that image. So you can take this code and start over and try something new. You can try different colors than me. You can try a different number of clusters. One thing I think would be good to do, and one of the reasons why mine didn't turn out as pretty as I would have liked it, is assign certain colors to the one, the, cl the biggest cluster, the next biggest cluster, the third biggest cluster, and the fourth biggest cluster. So that way you have like your base shapes and then you have your accent colors and they're like more prevalent on the page than others. So you can change the colors, you can change the number of clusters. Obviously you can change the image. You don't have to make the image of me unless you want to, although it's kind of creepy. So it's probably fine if you don't. This was part of my series of doing 30 data science projects in 30 days. If you want to check out two other data science projects, check out these two videos. Subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this for more Python and data science. Bye.